Howdy, Howdy Ramblers. Ramblers! It's uh, Free Beer Friday. What am I doing up at 8 in the morning? Trying to brew edition. Sometimes we like to get up early and brew so that we're done by early afternoon. Gives us the rest of the day to have fun. Uh, so we got everything going and uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, this is an untested recipe. Um, we're making uh, the biggest beer we've ever made. It's an original gravity about 1.091. It should be about 9% alcohol, kind of a rye PA, uh, imperial IPA, but not quite so hoppy. We've got 17 pounds of grain here that we are ready Oh my gosh! to uh, put in. This it smells bag really good. A little ridiculous. Mm, can't really see that, but there you go. Oh. So we're almost ready here with this water. Almost ready to go. Yep, it's going to be a big mash, so I hope we don't have any problems. Okay, well we got 152, so why don't we just take it there? Okay. That's close enough. We're supposed to get 153, but so that's kind of the first thing that's been a little off in doing such a, a big, big beer. Yeah. It seemed like there was too much water, which should have made it actually a little too hot. But it did. But it started out a little too cold, <laughs> and, and then just... slowly worked its way up, which usually starts hot and works its way down. But I think we're stable here at 152. Yeah. So this beer, we started off with 50, or sorry, 12 pounds of pale ale malt, and then we did uh, quite a bit of rye, uh, four, uh, four pounds. pounds, and so rye has a nice spicy flavor. And besides the rye, we also have some caramel malt in here. Uh, we have some American Victory malt for the biscuit flavor, just a little bit. Um, some honey malt for sweetness, but just a tad, and then uh, some roasted barley. So yeah, I think uh, rye kind of gives you like a nice grainy bite. Mm -hmm. It goes really well in a beer that's sort of in the in the in the amber to red to brown range. Yeah. You can do other things with it. We've had rye pails, um, that kind of thing. So I want this to actually have. We want it to have like a really nice malt characteristic, like sophisticated um, a malt a character. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, this is going good so far. And uh, no major problems. Nope. We'll see how it goes on with the process. Okay, so we just got a boil going, and I just threw in the 90-minute uh, hops, and that was an Apollo hops, which we use for bittering. In about 30 minutes, or maybe 40, I'm not sure, uh, we got the Cascade, and that's going to be uh, I'm using that for the flavor hop this time. I think it's going to give it a nice uh, kind of citrusy uh, a flavor, but not too strong citrus. A little citrus, a little, little flowery. For an aroma hop, I'm actually kind of mixing it up style-wise and using an East Kent Golding, which is going to maybe make it smell a little more like an English beer. Oh my gosh, better turn a fan on. Oh uh, yeah. So we have finished boiling this beer and it is now in the cooling process and almost done cooling. And we're going to put some Edinburgh yeast in it which is kind of uh, fruity and clean. And uh, you know, so far it's just gone pretty good today, but not our best brew day. Definitely wasn't without incident, and I think you can chalk a lot of that up to being kind of the first big beer. The, the first thing that happened, that's why it's a weird water temperature, was that the uh, wort was so sweet that it caked over this heat stick, and we had to use the other one. And actually, look at this. It's like bulging here. This heat stick might be toast now. Never had a problem otherwise. What other things went wrong? We put the hops in at the wrong time. We put the hops in at the wrong time. We lied to you earlier. It's a 90 minute boil. We wanted to do a 90 minute boil. A, so we'd have a little more water in our mash with so much grain. And then B, because it kind of cooks like you saw on the heat stick right. and makes what are called kettle caramels, which sort of add additional flavor the longer you cook the beer that we have. So that went out. We have a little bit more beer left here than we should because the heat stick went out for a while before we stuck the other one in. And then we had way too much grain. <laughs> yep, and uh, usually I just dump the grain into a trash bag and walk it over to our hallways trash chute. But today I was unsuccessful. I got as far as the elevator and the entire bag, the entire bag burst. Well, that was kind of a mess, and one of our neighbors walked out, and I had to explain what was going on because it looked like an elephant had vomited all over their floor. Clean it up. Good. Just now a little damp, but so now we know. Now we know. Double bag it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we get the yeast in there and get it uh, fermenting, and let's we'll come back in a month, a uh, month and a half, maybe even two months, and. Uh, Find out how it tastes. So it's months later and we've got our double rye all ready to drink. Ready We're really looking at, uh, it's, it's got a nice, uh, 
you know, brown at first glance, but if, if, you're, if you're looking through it, you see a nice uh, deep red with some orange around the edges. Really, really beautiful. I think you can see a little bit of alcohol. You can, and the the lacing is pretty obvious, but also the the um, head on this was like kind of a yellow almost. It wasn't quite off white. And it just disappeared, and I think that's a little bit because of the slickness and a little bit of the um, uh, graininess of the rye, and then also the amount of alcohol that's in there. All right, so let's see how it smells. All right. Yeah, I mean this is just really chocolatey. Yeah, intense uh, maltiness Malty. coming off of it. Coffee. A little bit of hops hiding in there, a little bit of uh, uh, floral, but mostly um, that and I think some uh, some aroma coming off the yeast. Ready for a taste? All right, let's taste it. Cheers. Cheers. You, the, the definitely the presence of the four pounds of rye is definitely there. 8.3%, you don't really taste the alcohol. I'm actually surprised that we don't get a little more of the hops because we didn't use a, enough that it would fall into like a um, Imperial IPA category. Well, I think we, we definitely got the rye forward aspect, which was our main goal. We wanted something where you're gonna taste the rye, there's no question. So you could take this hand to someone and be like, here, this is what rye tastes like. Right. And absolutely, they're gonna be like, Whoa. So definitely a recipe we will experiment with in the future more. We'll put this recipe <laughs> up on Hopville for you to check out for yourself. If you have suggestions for things we should brew, uh, hit us up in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter. We're also on Untapped if you want to follow and see what we're drinking. And until next time, ramble, ramble on. on.